Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from the world of digital infrastructure. And I've got a, a new thought leader. I think we uh, you're not new to the industry, but uh, new to me. So it, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And we are coming to you live. That's right. We are live, Melissa, um, at Data Cloud USA in Austin, Texas. And I have with me the thought leader, Melissa Farney. Melissa is the director of marketing at Tech Fusions. Melissa, welcome to JSA. I know it's not your first rodeo, and I, I love saying that here in Texas. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much, Dean. Yeah, we're excited to be here and to share some of what we're doing as a company. Tech Fusions is pretty new, only about 18 months mm -hmm. in business. So we're just getting started kicking everything off, telling the world who we are and what we're doing. Yeah. So we're um, <clears throat> data center owner and operator around the world, about 30 sites that we have purchased or selected uh, as our future data centers. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into some of that strategy because 30, 18 months having 30 <laughs> sites, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you bring those online? So some of what we've done is, um, you know, I'll call it adaptive reuse, but I, I want to, you know, yeah. drop that there and yeah. let you know that uh, like, that's how we're bringing everything online. So that has equaled about four gigawatts of capacity, planned capacity Hello. all around the world. Yeah. Huge, yeah. huge introduction to the space. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And you know, you said it's only 18 months. As fast as the industry is moving right now, that's probably feels like 18 years to you. Jeez. Yeah, no, <laughs> well, it ages me that way. Yeah, or, or 18 <laughs> days for that matter. Yeah. Um, but uh, you mentioned it and it's the first time I've heard it and I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, uh, adaptive reuse as a sustainability strategy. Tell us all about it. Oh my goodness. So right now our industry at large is facing all this pressure to bring everything online quickly. Mm -hmm. I used to say, like the term used to be build it and they will come. Yeah. And now it's build it. You better get building because they're already here. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, we need they're to at bring, the doorstep. Oh yeah. my gosh. Well, yeah, the doorstep doesn't exist. Oh my gosh. What do we do? You know, so one of the newer strategies and, and I won't call it a new strategy um, because it's been around for a little bit, but not many companies have tried it to this mm -hmm. scale. So by choosing not to break ground, it can in fact be a groundbreaking approach. So <laughs> I'm stealing that. Uh, you know, you, I will. Yeah. To, well, so we're, what we're doing, it's preserving environmental resources by repurposing existing structures uh, in large industrial plants, warehouses that already had immense power allocated to them. Floor bearing capacity could support the heavy racks that we need yeah. to bring in. So they already existed. They already had power. And what we're doing is then converting those. And so with this reuse, we're reducing waste from both demolition and new construction. It's incredibly sustainable, reduces emissions by up to 80%. Hot dog, that's that's le legit. It, it feels like creative reuse as well as, you know, adaptive. I get it. But like, um, yeah, wow, that's very, very, very cool. Um, we have um, a sustainable power generation. So we, yeah. we're, we're talking about the, the adaptive or creative reuse. But talk to us about power generation. So uh, in terms of power generation, as I said, the need for power is also at an all time high, not just finding the space that has power. So our power needs are growing and growing quickly. Yeah. And so we're actually starting to see some municipalities begin to reject applications that don't come in offering, say, something new in terms of bringing your own power, yeah. bringing your own microgrid support. So actually, this is a perfect thing. This is built into our company's strategy as well. We're committed to bringing in microgrid power to supplement what we're getting from the utility because, you know, our approach is believe that we shouldn't just consume what's out there, but also produce our own. And I will say there's an added benefit to becoming a little energy independent and starting to produce your own not just taking from the grid. And then yeah. we can always offer to put that back into the local grid as needed. Yeah, you know, um, and I haven't had an opportunity to read the entire article, but there was a New York Times article that was just published yesterday, basically um, cooking our industry, saying, you know, uh, everybody, everybody, it's it's too noisy and it's power hungry and it's all these things and communities are getting blindsided and all that. Mm -hmm. I wish they were here right now, the New York Times talking to you because you are what is more commonplace uh, yeah. in our industry than, than what, what, 
might maybe traditionally might be kind of legacy data center owner yeah. operators, you know, these big monoliths, windowless buildings, sucking up all of the, the natural resources. It ain't like that anymore. And folks like you are proving that point. So, um, yeah, boy, I, I wish I had that article in front of me right well, now. Well, you know, we forget sometimes, like, I'll use a car analogy, like no one's going after Ford Motor Company because they built a bunch of cars. We're just grateful that they recognize our need for transportation. Yeah. Society <laughs> needs to come along to data centers in the same light. Like they yeah. should recognize like, we don't build these structures because we really like to build <laughs> computer server warehouses. <laughs> like, giant, giant concrete buildings we, are our thing. It's, it's what gets us up. It is. I mean, we love what we do because yeah. we know that we can do it the best of anybody out there, but it's ultimately to serve society's digital needs. Such a, a, a great point. I was li I literally was talking about this yesterday on a panel that I was speaking on. But like, it is, it is lit. It is what is being enabled by what's yeah. happening in those buildings that is more important than what's happening in those buildings. Of course, people. You know, if you're if if I'm a uh, if I'm a uh, a city if I'm a city uh, manager or city engineer, I need to know what's going on. I need to know that we've got the right power and the you know all of those kinds of things. But from a public perspective, yeah. it is it is all of the things that is being enabled by the things in there. That is the real story. And so for people like you to come in and to say uh, we're going to even tell that story better. Right. You know, and, and that's kind of what it, that's kind of what it feels like to me that you're that you're doing. Well, that's what telling we're a better to do. story. Yeah. Well, telling a better story, building a better product, building a yeah. better system and ultimately taking all of the pieces and parts and and trying to reconstruct them into something new that doesn't harm the environment, doesn't harm the community. Now, yeah, there's no nimbyism tr per se for us because these structures already exist yeah. in people's backyards of. Uh, for what we're doing with yeah. the adaptive yeah. reuse. So so that's not as much of a factor, but we are still building and adding on. We are still taking down power, but we're offering to, to put some back. Yeah, which is like that that the the uh it's being a part of the yeah. existing ecosystem, kind of working that mm -hmm. in. Uh I just love it. I'm fascinated by all of it. Um, but um, let's let's put on our, uh, our our let's get out our crystal balls. And yeah. so, what is it about um, what the what you're doing and kind of where the industry is going with regard to sustainability mm -hmm. and kind of meeting the needs of next generation technologies yeah. that really excites you right now? Oh my gosh, what excites me is how much potential there still is to innovate. Yeah, and you know, I think like we. I don't think there's one crystal ball technology that I could ever point to. What excites me is the opportunity to look across all of the different opportunities. Yeah. Let's call them all opportunities, not challenges, and, and look at what we can do and how we can make a mix, how we can put things together. Because like I said, adaptive reuse, it isn't really new. I mean, there were companies trying to yeah. do it 10, 15 years ago, but to choose to do it at the scale that Tech Fusions is doing, that's unheard of. Yeah. To make that your primary go-to-market strategy, yeah. that's unheard of. And being, I think what we will see is um, companies that succeed at this, at uh, becoming more innovative and more sustainable, are willing to take that risk and do something that, well, we've talked yes. about it, but nobody has quite had the nerve to do yes. this this far. And then when you think microgrids on top of that, that's another, like, we've talked about doing this. We all know that we need to build smaller, more local power grids that support our needs. Yeah. But to, to actually say, nope, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this land. I'm going to build this pipeline. And I'm going to bring in that gas. And I'm going to provide my own power. And, I, I mean, the risk to run your own utility operations. So what we're going to see, what it will take to succeed is, is a company that says, I'm not going all in on just adaptive reuse, or I'm not just going in on one energy source. I am willing to innovate and take, like, oh, maybe it speaks to the strategy of those who can do adaptive mm -hmm. reuse, that mm -hmm. we can look at it and say, here's what is there, here's what I still need, and how do I bring these things together? I'm able to take what's existing yes. and somehow make magic out of it. You know, so. there are too many, too many quotable comments from you <laughs> right now. It's all, it is all so, so good. You are literally embodying that vibe that, that yeah. like that can you, you said commitment, you said risk, you have to be all in yeah. on something like this or you're not in at all. 
great. And uh, yeah, I love it. That, it's a real vibe. I love what you guys are doing. And okay. it and it feels, um, you know, innovation is a word that we throw around maybe a little haphazardly. Um, but it feels like innovation to me. It feels like art and creative uh, innovation to me as well. All right. Well, it feels like innovation is going to be my new catchphrase. So, <laughs> well, and that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much. You bet, Melissa. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. I appreciate you. Ben. Thanks. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We will see you soon.